So we're getting close to the end here. The last big chunk that we have to do is this um, delete confirmation dialog. And we're going to use a, a dialog fragment for that. So I'm going to right click and select new fragment. Now we don't have a pre-built one for dialog fragments, so we're going to have to start with a blank and do some editing. And I'm going to call this uh, delete confirm dialog. And this is going to be different because I'm not going to create a layout XML or any of the other callbacks or factory methods. Okay, so here we are. And uh, the first change I'm going to make is instead of extending fragment, I'm going to extend dialog fragment, dialog fragment. And then I have to resolve that import and I want the v4 version and I'm going to use the same empty constructor but then this is going to be different so I'm gonna so unlike a regular fragment instead of returning a view that I get from expanding a layout instead I'm going to return a dialog and this is going to be on create dialog resolve dialog and then on create dialog only takes a bundle and then all of this stuff is going to be different so what I'm going to do is use something called the uh, dialog builder and uh, and I want this to be an alert dialog so it's going to be alert dialog dot builder builder equals new alert dialog dot builder and then in here I have to give the context and so I'm going to get my activity and now I have a, an object that will help me build a dialog layout and so I'm going to set some properties here um, the first one I want to set is my icon and I need to supply a drawable here. So I found a reasonably good dialog um, icon, some nice warning icon. And uh, I've already saved a copy into my drawable folder for the password manager. So I won't do that again. But you would save it right into the drawable folder. And that's going to be r.drawable.warn icon. Where I put mine. And then I'm also going to set the title to a string or a string resource. Now uh, I can either type a long complicated expression or I can just go in here and go to value strings. And I'm just going to specify this directly in here this time. So the name is going to be. Um, dialog title so let's make this um, delete confirm title and uh, let's make the test um, or the text delete account info and then we're also going to want a piece of message text so delete confirm message is going to be are you sure you want to delete all info for this account okay and then we need uh, text cancel text we already have a cancel text and uh, let's create an OK text as well string equals OK, like so. All right, so that's all the text that we need. Go back to the fragment, and let's include our r.string.deleteConfirm title, and we'll set the message to r.string.deleteConfirm delete confirm message and now we're ready to add some buttons 
So this one's a little more complicated because a button has both text and also an event listener that gets called when the user clicks on the button. So we're going to set the negative button and r.string.cancel and then we want a new on click listener. And when I hit tab, it fills in most of this stuff for me. So um, this callback that gets called when you click on the button passes in the dialog. And if they click it, we just basically want this dialog to go away. So what we're going to do is call dialog.dismiss. And that's it for this one. And then we also want a positive button. And this one's going to be the r.string.ok. And we need another new on click listener. And this one's going to be a little more complicated. So basically, what we want to have happen inside this code is that um, we want to call a method in our main activity. And so, what we're going to, the way we're going to do that is we're going to put an interface on this class um, that has a callback in it and then we're going to require the main activity to implement that interface. So when the user does the click, well let's create the interface first. So our interface is going to be public interface on delete confirm listener and it's just going to have one method, which is void on delete confirm. Oh, nobody, just a semicolon. All right. So um, any class that implements this method can use this dialog. And then what happens when the user clicks on the button is we're just going to call the um, the listeners on delete confirm. So, so this step is a little complicated. We want to create an instance of on delete confirm listener listener, which is going to be equal to cast on delete confirm listener on get activity. So get activity is going to return the main activity then we're going to cast that to on delete confirm listener because it implements that. If it doesn't implement it, we're going to get an error here and the program's going to crash. So we'll have to make sure that main activity implements that. And then we have the listener. So now we're going to call the listeners on delete confirm method. So this passes the information back to the main activity. And before we implement that, let's just go ahead and finish this because we're pretty much done. Um, we want to return a dialog right here. And that's going to be the dialog that we've been constructing. The way you get it is by saying builder.create. So we've supplied the builder with a bunch of info. When we call create, it creates the actual dialog, returns it. So that's everything we need here right now. Let's go back to our main activity. And now we have to implement our on delete confirm listener. So alt plus enter implement methods that will add on delete confirm. And so um, for right now, just to test, I'm going to go ahead and create a log tag. Oh, I already have a log tag from before. Um, if I may have deleted that out, so if you don't have a log tag currently, add private static final string log tag equals main activity. And then you can use it down here just to write a log message. Log.d, use all plus enter if you haven't imported that yet. Log tag user click OK. Confirm. So just a handy message to our log to see everything is working or not. And I think that should be it. Let's go ahead and test it.
And I'll test it on the Jenny Motion. Waiting for our log to come back. Okay, so log in. Start push. Click on an account and click the delete button. Oh, we forgot to actually launch our our uh, dialog fragment. So let's go ahead and do that. So here's the part we forgot, um, or I forgot, is uh, when the user clicks on an action button, um, on options item selected gets called. And we have to check if id is equal to r.id.actionDelete. Then we want to show our dialog. And the way you do that is by using the Fragment Manager. So let's get a Fragment Manager before get support Fragment Manager. And then we need a new instance of our delete confirm fragment. That's the thing we're going to launch. So delete confirm fragment fragment is new delete confirm fragment. And then the way you do the add is by saying fragment.show and you pass it the fragment manager. And you can put an optional tag here. So um, delete confirm. And that should be it. That should cause our dialog to display. So I'm not actually adding it to the existing layout with the fragment manager here. Now I'm basically launching it on top of my activity. Found the wrong button. So log swordfish submit. Click on an account. Click the trash. So here's our dialog. It has our icon, our title, our message. If we hit cancel, it should just return us, and it does. So that's good. And if we click OK, we should get a message in the log, user clicked OK to confirm delete. So that uh, that shows us that everything is working correctly at this point, and we can go ahead and add our logic for actually deleting the account. So the uh, way we actually remove the account from our array adapter is uh, basically we have to go back to this um, account list fragment. So when the user clicks on an item, we know what item is being selected, and we've returned that item back to the main activity. But when the user wants to remove the item, we need to know that information as well so that we can remove the last one. So I'm going to add another private variable, called, uh, which is of type um, account item. And this is m current item. And then in here, when the user clicks, I'm going to first set m current item equal to the thing the user selected. And then that's what I'll pass back. And I know that the user clicked on this and selected an item because otherwise I wouldn't be showing account information. And if I wasn't showing account information, the trash um, icon wouldn't exist, and so the user couldn't be removing it in the first place. So since that's the only way they can do the removal, I know that mCurrentItem is always going to have the right thing in it. And then right under here where I add an account, I'm also going to add another method for remove current item. And that doesn't have to take any parameters because it's going to use mCurrentItem. And the way you do it is go to our original array adapter, which is called mAdapter. And we say mAdapter.remove, and we give it mCurrentItem. So let's go ahead and call that from our main activity. So if the users clicked on the delete icon, we're going to call our m account list dot 
remove current item. That should be it. Let's go ahead and try it. Go for the Jenny motion. Okay, so log in. Swordfish. And uh, let's get rid of our net zero account. We don't need that anymore. And I'll click on the trash icon. I'll confirm deletion. And it's gone. There's no net zero. Um, I haven't used Amazon in a long time. Let's delete that too. Oh, but you'll notice that uh, there's actually a little problem here because it's deleted it before I did the confirm. Um, I actually put this in the wrong place. That's kind of a serious bug. Well, let's go ahead and fix it. So I uh, put my remove when the user clicks the delete button. I really wanted to do it down here when the user clicks the confirm button instead. Oops. So let's try it now. I suppose that's why we test. All right, so log in. And good. OK, so net zero is still there. Confirm deletion, and it goes away. Try Netflix. This time I'll cancel. It should still be there. Good. Now I'll delete, and it's gone. So let's add a new one for net zero. And it works. All right, so our add works, our delete works. Um, we can select any of these accounts. Um, login seems to work. That's most of what we need. Now, we haven't done anything about storing information and retrieving it. So, um, so we have kind of a significant bug. If I change the screen orientation, I get a crash. And the reason is because I'm uh, accessing the current account right here. So on my on start, it's looking at the current account to get the name and password for what to display. Um, but that doesn't exist here um, because I haven't carried it over across destroy create. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing in the next week's lesson. We're going to learn how to carry the information across and um, make it secure so that nobody can get access to our um, sensitive data.